We know that the space we're living in is three-dimensional. But some people say it's actually a four-dimensional world. And the fourth dimension is time. Indeed, everything around us happens with time. No matter how static it looks to you, it's actually not. To science and engineering, time plays a key role as a dimension in mathematical formulations of physical laws and theories. In our solid mechanics world, when we say we're solving a static analysis, we're actually intentionally ignoring the existence of time because we want to simplify the problem when the deformation of a structure is slow enough that the dynamic effect can be ignored. But we should always remember the full version of the equation of motion where inertial effect and damping effect are included. The unknowns for our problem are deformation, velocity, and acceleration with respect to time. We discussed in the previous course that a dynamic problem can be solved as a frequency domain problem or a time domain problem. For frequency domain problem, the unknowns, deformation, velocity, and acceleration are all pre-assumed to be in sinusoidal format, which means it is defined that every material point over the domain is doing harmonic motion. We can call such analysis linear dynamics. However, for a time domain problem, there is no such assumption for the format of the unknowns. They are free to be whatever they can be. This means we need to directly solve the given equation of motion. We know that u dot is the derivative of u with respect to time, and u double dot is second order derivative of u. This makes the equation of motion a second order ordinary differential equation with respect to time. Ideally, by solving this ODE, what we want to find is continuous results for the entire time period. But this is actually not something can be found easily. In fact, for most of realistic mechanical problems, it's not even possible to find analytical expression of results. You might never have such a close look of a baseball hitting the bat, but here it is. Can you imagine how large the deformation is for the baseball during the impact? Do you think there is a mathematical expression that can fully describe such deformation over the time? The truth is, there is not. So to solve such dynamic problem, or we can say solve the ODE, what we do is to divide time to a finite number of time steps and solve the problem at these time points. We call this time integration method, or time stepping. To understand this, maybe you can think of how a GIF image uses a series of static images to present a moving object to you. The smoothness and the level of continuity of the animation depends on how many images the GIF is made of, and that is the frame rate. Similar thing to time integration. Ideally, the smaller the time step is, the more accurate the result will be. But of course, we always need to consider the computational cost in our analysis. So how does time integration work? The main idea of time integration is to use non-solution from previous time steps to find next unknown time step solution. The very first state of the problem needs to be given, of course. Like for this baseball problem, the initial condition could be the bat is at rest and the baseball is flying with the initial velocity 10 meters per second. So how to use the previous non-time step solution? There are many different ways, and this leads to different time integration methods. Some methods use only one previous solution to calculate the next time step. Some other methods use several previous time steps to find next solution. The way to progress from previous to next step varies between different methods too. For solving problems governed by ordinary differential equations, Engineers or scientists choose time integration method based on their accuracy, stability, and computational characteristics for the specific problems. We can never say certain method is superior to others for all the cases. Sometimes, using wrong time step method for a problem may even lead to erroneous results or requirement of unrealistic computational cost. In this session, we will mainly discuss the time integration method that only uses one previous solution. We can call it one-step time integration method. It will be used to explain the concept of time integration. 
for first order ordinary differential equation where there's only first order derivatives, the one step numerical integration method is called Euler method. For second order ODE, where there is second order derivatives, for example, our equation of motion is a second order ODE. There are multiple popular time integration methods, for example, the Newmark beta method or the recently widely used generalized alpha method. No matter for first order ODE or second order ODE, the time integration methods can be divided into two important categories, the implicit and explicit time integration. And in the later lessons, we will put much effort to discuss the feature and application of these two types of time integration schemes.